Hi, I'm Steve Casely from CBT Nuggets, and welcome to this nugget on public key infrastructure, or as it's most commonly referred to as simply PKI. PKI, I'm going to describe as the ultimate implementation of encryption, and the reason I describe it as ultimate implementation is PKI has predefined establishment of your the trust relationships so that the keys you're communicating are absolutely guaranteed to be secure and protected while communicating over the public internet. And while PKI is an extremely deep, complex subject, the good news, as with most other technology subjects for our CSA exam, you do not need to know the absolute detailed internals of PKI, so I've extremely simplified the PKI process to focus on the pieces of PKI that are going to be particularly relevant to your CISA exam, and it starts at the digital certificate. PKI is all about having these predefined, secured digital certificates, which then can be shared with your various trading partners or shared with anything and everything that you're going to be using for communicating over the internet. How do we ensure these digital certificates are secure? That's where the next pieces of PKI comes in. The digital certificate is signed by, approved by, certificate authorities. So who or what is the certificate authority? Certificate authority are predefined organizations that have gone through all of the hoops and all of the qualifications to be de deemed to be appropriate secured certificate authorities. So what basically happens, again, oversimplified is, my organization wants to get a digital certificate. We submit our application form to the certificate authority, and the certificate authority reviews it and validates, does the appropriate checks, like trying to get a mortgage and getting the credit check, the certificate authority is going to do the quote unquote credit checks to ensure that we are certified appropriate organization and they're then going to issue our digital certificate and they're going to sign it and that signing itself is going to be encrypted but it can be re-verified by going back. The next step of the puzzle is the verification happens at the registration authority. So the certificate authorities also are known to the registration authorities, and therefore we have the third party validation that although the certificate is issued by the certificate authority, when we go through and validate each certificate, it happens through the registration authority. So we have the third party anti-collusion at processes in place. Extremely oversimplified, but we get our digital certificate and then that digital certificate is shared with anyone and everyone that we're using for communications and the validation is, is through the CA and the RA. Last thing as a CISA auditor we need to be aware of is the expiry dates, or the CRL, the Certificate Revocation List, which basically says this certificate is no longer approved for any of hundreds of reasons. It's simply expired. We've ceased to become a credible organization. So overly simplified, this is what happens. When people initially think of PKI, they think of the main purpose of doing PKI is in a true electronic commerce situation. So we have a bank that uses debit cards, credit card machines at their stores. We want to make sure that all of those financial transactions are secure. 
that goes through PKI and actually has another layer of PKI implementation that I'm not going to discuss in this overview, but PKI can be used whenever and wherever we need to, again, have secured encryption in place. And I'll give you an example from my previous life. I worked for a lottery in Canada, and this lottery in Canada was implementing VLTs, slot machines, into local bars. Because the bars were obviously a non-trusted location in the public space, we needed to have absolute validation that only our VLTs were going into those bars and talking to our central system. Therefore, we implemented PKI for all of the communications between the VLTs and head office. So through that process, we had to become, or we had to associate with certificate authority. We had to get digital certificates. And in fact, the digital certificates were of extremely short life because we wanted to ensure that we didn't have rogue installers who were going out and being able to install machines incorrectly. So we went through some very elaborate combinations of digital certificates, CAs and RAs, and expiry dates to ensure that only certified VLTs went up in the system and that the certified VLTs continued to be refreshed on a regular basis so that people weren't going in and creating rogue processes. Bottom line, PKI secure transactions for whatever purpose your organization may require. And as an auditor, we're simply required to ensure that all of the mechanics are being followed appropriately. I hope this nugget has been informative for you, and thank you very much for viewing.